stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs? You'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it with stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 shoe. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the World Athletics Championships Day 2 Sidious Mag live podcast unpacking everything presented by A6. You're rocking the Japan kit. We're all rocking A6 in some sort of way. Did you, you plan didn't that you, you, you didn't get We're the memo. Today, I guess did you? you didn't get it. I heard orange. I didn't know which <laughs> color specifically. I thought we were all going Japan kits. You got to yeah. do better. So... A6 is a proud sponsor of the World Athletics Championships, and they're backing all of Sidious Mag's coverage throughout Worlds. So we'll be rocking the uh, Super, what is it, the Super Blast? Like, uh, all, all I'm the, I've been rocking the Cumulus. Okay. <laughs> and, w you know, we've got the Media 800 coming up in two days. We're spiking up for that one. Should be a good one. But on top of that, uh, I mean... Not the best day for A6's top athlete. We'll touch on that in a second. I guess it kind of leads into sort of where we're going to start, which is the men's 100. That just wrapped up. Uh, we're still riding the high oh. from the men's 100. The race that ultimately is good for the sport in so many ways. Noah Lyles, your 2023 world 100-meter champion. It kind of feels crazy to say. Like yeah. a year ago, maybe we weren't thinking that. But... He's a man who set out on this mission and made it happen. It took a while for the results to pop up on screen, but Noah Lyles wins 100. Uh, Letzila Tibogo takes silver, and Zarnell Hughes comes away with the bronze, but it was a hell of a close race. Can I just, if, if you're in the chat and you at one point in your life doubted Noah Lyles, just drop an apology. Because I'm going to, I had my moments of doubt this year, I, so I'm sorry, Noah. I have to say sorry. Like, <laughs> Noah, I'm so sorry. I didn't even have you in my top three yesterday, but it was, your start was, it, I don't know, your start lately hasn't been good, and clearly, I don't know if you heard this podcast, you were like, alright, I'm, I'm about to prove you guys wrong, we but... We were still rooting for him. I mean, we were definitely still rooting for him. <laughs> I definitely, I'm glad that he won, but this is, heightens his chance of double gold, I mean, uh, yeah, the doubles what? alive. You, you know, <laughs> I was walking out of the stadium, refreshing Twitter, and then I saw that uh, Josephus Lyles, his brother, like shared, like, I don't want to hear anyone ever say anything bad about Noah's start ever again. And then I was just like, I, I had a moment where I just stopped in my tracks and I was like, man, I said a lot of things about his start <laughs> yesterday and I am eating my words. It's the only thing I've eaten in the last 24 hours. And man, it was. <sighs> I mean, from I, I didn't know where to watch during that race because it's sort of like in years past, last year, it's like, all right, you got to watch what Fred's doing or what Trayvon, and you kind of knew your clear favorite, but this time around, you're just, I don't your eyes start to wander, so it's the race that we're going to be watching, like, 10 times over and over again to really kind of see what exactly happened. Think, but yeah, you, from your vantage point, David, I mean, like, you lost your mind. With yeah, things. well, like, I was watching the semifinals, and clearly, like, from Noah's start and that, he, yeah. like, with that, like, you know, Jasmine uh, got in a bit late, and she didn't get to see the semi, and I was like, Noah, like, I think final, like, his start was ridiculous. Really got out of the blocks. That's pretty cool. Like, a guy can go away the next day and change things completely around. He obviously got a lot of confidence from the semi final. And, like, you know, the race, like, you know, we, he wasn't winning it. He wasn't winning the final till no. the end. He won it on the line. So, like, to also, like, that's, that's even more impressive to hold the composure and to come through like that. And we didn't even know till the results came up at the end. So, like, it'd be one thing, oh, he ran away with it. But, like, he came through, he held his form, and he ran to the line. So, I think, you know, he defied all the odds 
and he still came away with the win. So I can only imagine now the confidence he's going to be heading into the 200. David, are you sure you don't, you haven't been watching <laughs> sprints your whole life? Because this is the quickest what? someone has ever done yeah. from like, just kind of like, oh, I'm going to become a sprint guy. All of a sudden, next day, I, he's the biggest yeah. sprint like, guy. Yeah. <laughs> he talked to every coach. He really got that down packed, and I couldn't have said that better myself. Yeah, the know, fact that he really kept his composure throughout that, because a lot of people will tend to, get out of their lane. They start worrying about what's going on, especially with the bat. I mean, uh, not a, the best start out there, especially when you're not the best starter. And so I don't know if I was anybody else in the 200, I'd be real scared. I think you really saw it in Jasmine. If you could explain this, cause we we're talking earlier today with Maurice Green about this. Like, it seems like he chose to exert more of his energy, his HP in the first half of the race it's, and you really saw it in the semifinals, right? Like, it was a noticeable difference of just energy that he was willing to use. I feel like I really can't answer that if I'm big. Because I didn't watch the semi, so I wasn't really there for the semi. But a lot of the times when you're getting out, it's that those first few pushes. But one thing that I will say is Noah's powerful, so even if his reaction time is slow, those pushes mean so much more. And you're actually exerting, in my eyes, I feel like you're exerting less energy in the beginning because you're being more powerful with those pushes where some people are using more energy because they're really trying to push. And he was a little bit more relaxed in those pushes. Noah's also the kind of guy that is like, he relies on the numbers and the data. And so like, I think like so much of this self-belief and just himself comes from like, you know, you, you're citing power and like there's actual numbers that he looks at in practice. Like it, the, this tandem of, of Noah and coach Lance Brahman, like they're all about that stuff. And so like, whereas, you know, we have our doubts for sure, but that's because we only see what's happening during the races. We don't have the practice data. And so I think like, that's sort of where he draws his confidence from and it might come off as brash to some people, but I mean, at the end of the day, the last person laughing is Noah Lyles. <laughs> I thought you were about to say that he gets his like energy and confidence from likes like that data, the amount that he's shown on social media this year. Like, and that's one of the coolest parts of this whole thing is following his journey. Along. He, he's been so transparent from day yes. one and he, he and his coach, had outlined a plan very intently, very obviously saying like, we need to get, if we're going to win the hundred, which I'm going to do, I'm going to do the double and think back eight months. It's like, you're not winning the double. No, like, I don't know what's, what, what's what going you, on in I your head. I don't know what you're seeing in practice, <laughs> but what we're seeing in races, you're not winning this double. But then he called the shot and they were so methodical in the way that they approached the entire year. And now at this point, like, you were saying, like, what a great year for Netflix to be here. Yeah. We yeah. saw this yes. whole journey, but he yeah. really did share every single step of the way and called his shot. The Babe Ruth of track and field, they're calling. That uh, man shared every single part of his journey, but not only that, on the mental aspect of it, I think that's also why he came out on top, because he's been firm in his belief, like, I'm coming out with gold, I've been you got to train your mind and he's been training that mind he sees his therapist and so i think that he takes that extra step that some athletes don't necessarily take he's also got his um like so like ter mental therapist but he's also got like his uh, physical therapist on the side of the track with him all the time mm -hmm. she's loosening him out before every session you know they go everywhere together um i remember like speaking to him at the paris diamond league <clears throat> and um asking him a few questions about his start and he always spoke about power but like he says when my coach says I'm good I'm good and so obviously clearly like the data like and that's how you that's probably how you like really get true confidence like seeing the numbers and you know that tells him it's not trying to fake it he sees the numbers in training he probably knew it was there all year maybe we didn't see it in the heats it came true in the semi-final and obviously it came true today like so you know he, he is he's talking it up but he is in the background putting in a big game and he's they have a plan and they're following it through and I think that is the coolest thing to see and not to be going into the distance again but we do see that with Jacob <laughs> Ingeritz what I'm saying here, what, I'm, what, what I'm saying here is that like you know they have a plan they're following it and like it's not just it's random training it's setting it's setting something out from the start of the year following it through and like looking at si seeing things come in the plan in training that's what gives the confidence even if a race maybe doesn't go well throughout the season you can still reverse back to training and say the numbers are shown well everyone's allowed to have a bad race and then that gives them the confidence to not get knocked after something like a maybe a disappointing heat. What was your heart? Speaking of numbers, what was your heart rate 
just sitting there as the gun, you know, is up. Because my, I was legitimately so nervous. At yeah, that point. I don't have a heart rate monitor on yeah. this thing, but <laughs> it was it was definitely high. I I remember just like I turned to the people who were around me, and I was just like, I don't know how this race is gonna go. Like, and that's kind of like the weirdest part was just sort of like it, last year. It's like, yeah, just watch Fred, just watch Fred. This time around, it's like, I even after the no. finish line, I was just like, I think. Coleman won. That's and what I said. Like, and then yeah. no, very. I Coleman how had cr- it took so long yeah. for those results to come up, and I think I was more nervous for the results to pop up. Yeah. The results guy, who the timer just being like, I, I, <laughs> the hip number fell off. I think that's no. Well, <laughs> and sometimes, yeah, well, sometimes what you see in the distance events too is that like they put the wrong name up yeah, for like yeah, a they second and then like they change yeah. it. And I was just waiting for that to happen, but then like I, with a hundred, you can't do that. So, kind of what I wanted to do now is just sort of is just like we'll go around you know, each one of us. And, like, really, truly, like, this victory by Noah Lyles is really good for the sport because kind of, like, when we've been looking for the Bolt-like figure, and he doesn't like those comparisons. In the podcast interview I did with him before coming into Worlds, like, we've been at this, we've been banging on this drum since 2018, and he doesn't like it. But he's forged his own path, and now, like, he's got this gold medal in the 100. He's the world's fastest man that it's going to carry over into the Olympic year. And we have this guy, he's American. He's got so much personality and talent. Like it's going to draw eyeballs to the sport. So one reason from each one of you, why is Noah Lyles winning the hundred good for the sport? I think you just kind of summed it up right there. Like (laughs) he, I think Noah is super popular within the sport, but now the goal is how do you get him to transcend beyond the sport? Right. And a double gold is how you set that narrative and NBC hyped him up like crazy before the Olympics. It didn't work out the way he would have hoped, but, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because he hasn't won the 200 yet. You still have to run the race, but just having that double gold leading in like Eugene running well there is important. Now it's about getting like that Coca-Cola deal, right? Yeah. And those the big Olympic sponsors, who's going to be in that McDonald's commercial before the Olympic Games? And that's how you transcend beyond our little bubble of diehard track and field fans and get into, you know, the social conscious. You know, kind of when, you know, I flew, flowed at it, that tweet about like Netflix p- picked a really good season to follow the sprints. But, you know, I'm really hoping it does have the F1 effect where it's sort of like everyone got hooked in 2021 and that season was the greatest F1 season in history. And I hope we can bait a couple more, you know, regular sports fans to watch the whole entire series and then just come away being like, oh, my God, that was awesome. And now next year you just it leads into the Olympic year that I hope that. You know, in it, it's up to the you know the editors now basically as to <laughs> how you're gonna you know <laughs> make this whole storyline work. But they've got six 45 minute episodes. I'm looking forward to it. There are some unfortunate losses today too. If we yeah. want to dive into that a little bit, yeah. So I mean, like again, to to how we got to that point, like it was Jacobs was a non Jacobs was a non factor. Uh, you know, Fred got bounced in the semis point by oh. point oh one. Oh my God. Gosh, his start was not great, though. No, it, it was not great. And that's what cost him getting into that final, to be honest, being slow in that start. And I can't even really think what's going through Fred's head because Fred is usually one of those ones that's so mentally prepared between Fred and Noah. Those are two people that they put their money where their mouth is yeah. like point blank, period. And so that was just a really unfortunate situation for fred it's right it's right to have a pair of shoes like that and not make the final yeah Man. it's <laughs> it's it's gonna be interesting what happens from here right like this is a huge spark that just got lit under i think we're gonna see an angry fred a hungry fred and like that is gonna be dangerous going into like the olympic year where it's sort of like maybe i you know this is an assumption but like floating out the double gold phase world record and all that stuff like it's big talk and like yeah he was the world champion to like give himself the confidence to do that but like in a way like now we've got we've got that confidence mixed with just like a redemption arc and i think it's gonna be really good going into 2024 so uh yeah he dropped a couple curse words on the on the, uh, the, the broadcast good for <laughs> the sport that. i would say but then after that like he came through the mix zone and was like very open sort of like i think sometimes the athletes need an extra minute or two to like really process 100%. those thoughts and that long winding Absolutely. walk to the mix zone will give you some time i was talking to someone from usatf and they said they timed how long it walks through the mix zone so if you're an athlete step off the track just walking in a pretty normal pace through the mix zone 
four minutes. Four really. minutes? Yeah, to go up a, through the stadium, down, through the TV broadcast, through the written press, through the internet press. It's takes probably for what's minutes. best. It's what's best for some of these athletes. If, if, you, if you total up all the uh, the amount of time they spend on the track, that's longer than that. I mean, <laughs> especially in the hundreds. The ten k guys, I don't know. Um, so another, just I guess, loss. I hate to call it. Christian Coleman. He had a great start. Oh my Missed, god! Just misses the medals for the second year in a row. It's just heartbreaking for him on that front. Like you obviously want to be there, and then. Oblique Seville had a, a really, really strong semifinal and obviously prelim, and here we are, you know, unfortunately no medal. You know, it, what's really funny is I just heard that Zarnell Hughes wrote in his diary this morning, 988 <laughs> bronze. <laughs> He's so realistic, and I love he, that But he did that I'm kidding. He did, he did, did that. the same when he broke the... I'm kidding, David. He oh, didn't sorry. do that. All right. Okay. Imagine oh, sorry, predicting okay. bronze. I was like, what? Just write it bronze. I was like, why didn't he say gold? It works. <laughs> what an idiot. Yeah. You gotta it's say gold. One of those conversations we talk about all the time, actually, is if you're ever really trying to get a medal you always shoot for gold because then you'll at least be in that medal contingent it's kind of say? like if you shoot, shoot for, for the, the moon, moon and you <laughs> land on the stars <laughs> land on the stars um zarnell you know but he i thought he won just because he celebrated so much mm. but he didn't he i think he knew he meddled yeah and that's why he was celebrating so much he's been so close to a medal a couple times before so for him to finally come and get one in itself that is a win and i mean he's had a great season so i mean obviously who doesn't want to walk away with gold but to walk away with hardware after having such a phenomenal season i mean you were the top sprinter for a long time until today <laughs> yeah and then to set the stage a little bit i think tobogo our silver medalist is a better 200 meter runner Yes. Then he is a hundred runner. But he doesn't know what good he doesn't know is. What he's best at it. Now he's got one senior medal. He thinks he's a freshman at Oregon. Right? He yeah. reminds <laughs> me, he honestly does remind me of Noah where Noah has this really kind of slow start and he's got great top end speed. Both of them are running their races kind of the same throughout this, this whole meet so far. And so I'm excited to watch him do the 200. Uh, so if we were to give that race a grade, what would it be? Because like coming into it where everyone's like the hundreds, the hundreds, the hundreds are going to be like the must watch event. A, B, C, D. I mean, I'm giving it an A minus yeah. because it had the drama. I think the semifinals had drama in it. You know, the defending champ not being there. That's all part of the day. Um, ultimately, you know, for Noah, it's a fast time. I think that there's been a lot of talk of these nine sixes and nine sevens out of everyone this year and for some reason we just keep seeing nine eights and nine nines so um for that reason i can't give it a, a, a flat a or an a plus but just drama wise i don't get too tied up in time a minus i think uh, i'm going a as well just because yeah to, to your point a nine six five would have been the a plus yeah. <laughs> we are like never doubt noah never doubt noah but we're like well, ignore that part <laughs> the nine six five part we're gonna pretend just, that uh, <laughs> exclude that part yeah <laughs> Jasmine, what do you grade the race? Um, you know, I'm going to have to say, I'll say a B plus. Okay, why? But Hell yeah, love a why, tough teacher. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically along those same reasons. We've seen faster 100 meter finals. Nine, I mean, granted, nine eight is fast, but we have seen faster. Um, they've had high time, faster times that they wanted to run themselves. But I do love the excitement of it. It was a race where everyone was like, wait a minute, who won? Everyone was kind of like, who's, con we're all confused here. What's going on? Who's going to take it? So yeah, B plus for me. I was going to say B plus as well for the simple reason I hate when a 100 final is, is finished and you don't know who won. Mm. Like you want like, you want a clear answer. Well, I just want to see who crossed the line. Oh, like oh, who won? There and wasn't then, that and, much emotion. And then across. yeah, because yeah. no one knew. No one even knew who was second, third. Like, and then so I and I would give the B plus. All of that B plus goes to Noah coming through. So it's a B plus for the whole field, but all down to so Noah. Noah gets like an A, but like Noah everyone, gets an A. Everyone else You're right. actually a teacher. So. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's just I think a hundred, like you know. You want to you want to see the the winner come through the line without having to wait on the you know the scoreboard. Yeah, I think know? they should just throw someone's name up there, and if yeah. it's wrong, that's even more. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> Let's mix yeah. it up then a mix little, it up bit. A little yeah. bit. Part of me is like, you know what? It's also an A minus because it wasn't an American sweep, and I mm. I want that. You know, if Vince McMahon was in charge of track and field, I think he would purposely throw up in that situation, like. 
you know, Zarnell Hughes on first and every crowd and let him celebrate and then have it correct a couple times. Like, I think that'd be the most interesting way to do it. Just <laughs> yeah. drama wise. If we were, yeah, if we yeah. were professional <laughs> wrestling, I think we should mess with the crowd. I thought you were going to say like <laughs> all of a sudden the lights dim and then like, you just hear like, uh, Jamaican music blaring. It's like, by God, is that <laughs> Usain Bolt's music? Yeah. With a folding chair. <laughs> With a folding chair. <laughs> but, uh, but I think the most important thing for the sport was that Noah won, simply also because of the Netflix series. Yeah. That yes. story is killed if he didn't win. Well, I don't know. I know. it. No, when you're watching and you're dreaming as a kid and you see the confidence in Noah in himself pre-season building up, you're going to be following the series. You're going to be seeing this guy acting like a world champion. And then he doesn't be a world champion. <laughs> well, no, that you're, I think what you're thinking is Noah's, <laughs> o- Noah's own documentary because they were, they're following like six, no, seven no, guys. Yeah, yeah. But, but there is something way more confident about Noah compared to all the other sprinters this year. Look at him coming out onto the track from the heat where he was given the, the, the waves. Like, you know, he yeah, was... Well, uh, that was crazy. Yes. Yeah, that yeah, was. but that's what I'm, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like he for the sport and for this series, I feel like it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Right? I definitely yeah. I agree with that, and especially because we do have that buildup of his own docu series that he has, mm. and so to see him come out on top, it's kind of like maybe we need more of this in the sport so that you guys can truly see what's going on behind and the scenes. Especially for the people, like, again, I watched Drive to Survive, got completely hooked on Formula One, but never knew anything about it beforehand. People won't know anything about, well, we're hoping people won't know anything about Noah Lyles before the Netflix series. And that's why I think it's yeah. important. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's shift gears over to the women's side because they're also following that group. And so... You know, they've got cameras on Talu, on some of the Jamaicans, the Americans. And, you know, the today was, I mean, all the favorites made it through. No big surprises. It was boring, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> not that it was, not that their, them running was boring, but everyone did as expected, to be honest. Because there's five women who are so much better than everyone else. Right you know, now, right? like, but I do have to give a shout out to Yua because... Um, he was Svoboda from Poland, yeah. Yes, she is... Finally, thank goodness, putting that 60 meter speed to work because a lot of the times year after year, she kills it in the 60 and then she comes outdoors and she's not running the times that correlate. Like you just don't run 7.0 and run an 11.34. So it's really nice to see her finally break 11 seconds and make it onto the next round and poland's not that far from here right like so they're loud for poland we yeah. gotta check a map i think it's like pretty close so they're fired up for her but uh, for me the takeaway <laughs> yeah, i could get a map on screen too <laughs> yeah, so, we, okay. so we can figure this out the globe uh, <laughs> the the thing that for me today was oh man like any doubts of Shelly Ann? Yeah. Oh, out the window. Oh, that was smooth. <laughs> that that was not, easy. All she did was get out, to be honest. That race, she literally got out, which was fantastic. And then she maintained. She didn't push. She didn't do anything extra. She just maintained that form and went through that line. And girl, come on, Shelly. Come on, girl. I, yeah, I'm not ready to hand Shelly Ann Fraser Price the gold medal because of just how deep the field is. But yeah, no, it was very impressive. Um, I, 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 my she Patriot, ran my PB, you yeah. guys, and she shut it down like you, thirty meters. You should out. have been in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shakari running ten nine two, fastest time of the first round, like, yeah. and then shut giving like a down. nice little wave to the crowd. All right, so I don't want to like over. I, I don't want to tell Shakari how to run her race because she's better would, at it than me. Yeah, but I do kind of like like. I feel like allocating that energy through the rounds. I feel like sometimes Shakari comes out and is, uh, you know, the crowd loves her. Everyone wants to see a show and she puts on a show. Mm-hmm. And it's something that we've talked about in the past is that oftentimes her semifinals, her best race. And I think the idea that it's like, Hey, can you just like coast through the first and second round a little bit and then save all that energy and that show for the the final? Yes. And you know, we're not there yet, but I, I do think that that, is what I saw today was like, yeah, I'm just here. What do I need? Okay, I'll do that. Show up, check the box, cool down. What do you do? I don't know. And then go home. <laughs> and Literally rest a light up, little cool come down. back another day. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess the only dramatics in that first round were like, it was a false start for a bit in Shikari's uh, heat, and so then it was like waiting around for that. We had a couple of instances of that in the the hundred today, but yeah, I mean in the women's hundred, I think we're going into this one with five women with a really strong chance of gold. Maybe Shelly Ann's is a little bit better than the rest, so the five women would be. Carrie Richardson, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, uh, Sharika Jackson, or you Jose Talu, and Julian Alfred would be the top yeah. five. I, I think that's if fair. If you guys had to pick your top three right now, who would it be? Um, I'm gonna go Shelly Ann for the win. Uh, Talu for silver. She carry for bronze. Talu had such a great start. She had to run ten meters today. Like the the following ninety, she worked yes so hard to get out and to have such a big lead on everyone that it, I've never seen someone shut it down earlier in a hundred. And I, I don't think her heat was that good compared it to some of the others. But, but like she did not have to do anything. It she was had incredible. a great heat to be in to just relax and not have to worry. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it now. Like second place, eleven, twelve, like. Yeah, it was... She didn't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, but Talu, I said this in our preview show, she's my pick to, like, if I had to put money on someone who's getting a medal, she's so consistent. And that start, it's not like, which version are we going to get? It's every single time. It's good. If I had to bet right now, Shelly Ann, I think she won me over. I, I think I am definitely was never a hater, but I had yeah. my doubts of whether or not there was enough time for her to get where she needed to be. And I think after today, I'm on board. Um, I then I would maybe say Shakari, then Talu, but then that leaves out Sharika. But Sharika was quiet today, right? Like it was, it just I guess she just oh. showed up and checked the box as well. It was nothing. We have semifinal heat sheets for the hundred. Oh, so I guess like I'll read them off and you tell me what you think, uh, Jasmine. Just kind of first impression. Uh, so in the semifinals, the first two in each heat plus the next two fastest times qualify to the finals. Heat one, uh, Gina Lukenkemper from Germany, uh, Michelle Lee A, I think it is, Ali. Uh, uh, Daryl Nada, Ewa Swoboda, Tamari Davis, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, Zanab Doso, and then Rosemary Ch uh, Chukwuma. That one's going to be Shelly Ann. And Ewa possibly could be your top two. Maybe I Tamari. might say Daryl. Okay. Yeah. Then Heat two. Oh, this is, uh -oh. This, yeah, is, this is, this is what it's got to Lou. This one is Sharika Bulagara uh, talks, uh, Sasha Lee Forbes, Majinga Kambungi, Sharika Jackson, Shakari Richardson, Mary Jose Talu, Zoe Hobbs, and Joel Bestu. So you've got Shakari Talu and Sharika Jackson all together. I just, I knew that was going to happen. Why? 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 And so, like, when uh, you, uh, USA is when you've kind of talked about this before on our shows where, like, uh, Shakari, that's when she that's goes, when she's balls out. Go all out. Do you she's, think this might take uh, too much out of her if she, if she tries to do that? I'm Now I'm concerned. And there's, women have less rest between the Yes, they've the got final. less rest. She's She has to go all out. She cannot cruise this. She, there is no slowing down through the line. I'm sorry. You're in there with Shrika and Tulu. They're not about to give it to you easy. And Michelle, this honestly. This is supposed to be a diamond like, league race. Like, like the three of them are supposed to face off at one point. a diamond league final. Because Michelle is really good as well. And so Michelle is going to find her way to make it in. Like, she's going to try to find her way. She's not going to give it to her easy. So then who's that leaving the third? Uh, Ronnie Rosius, Gina Bass, Brittany Brown, Julian Alfred, Natasha Morrison, Dina Asher Smith, Nikita uh, Cito, and then Geraldine Frey. Like the third one is that me in that heat. Why did they do that? All right, here's my question: Not who do you think is going to win, but in a similar vein of Noah, who do you want to win? Ooh, this is so tough because you know I'm such a Shelly fan, so like I want Shelly to win, but. I, I really want Sha'Carri to come out with a win. I just feel like it's overdue. It's a little overdue. We've seen the changes that she's gone through. We've seen how hard she's put in work. She's ran fast for the past three years. Like, it's just, it's time. I'm glad she's finally on a team officially. And so I would like to see her come out with a medal. I feel like this is a question of... 
almost like who do you if you had like LeBron or MJ playing each other in a championship <laughs> game when LeBron's pick? 18 and MJ's however old, like who do you want? You want the, the GOAT to have, add one more Man. and really cement <laughs> themselves? Or are you investing in the future of the sport and, you know, that excitement of what's to come? I wonder, like, I'm just trying to think, like, again, what it makes for the best storyline going into the Olympics. Like, then, if the, if you're going for that angle, and it's Shakari upsetting everyone and, like, middle fingers to the world. Yeah, definitely. And, like, Getting DQ'd for giving middle fingers, too, I think would be, like, you know, like, let's see that some controversy. That, I'm just saying, that's what Vince McMahon would do. <laughs> yeah. The, the, <laughs> let's give you guys something to talk about. Like, honestly... <laughs> Shakira Richardson winning this thing, the stadium is burning down. Oh, that's, not, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah, I just think I think the celebration is going to be epic. One hundred percent. Like it's going to be kind of an expected if Shelly Ann wins. Like yeah, you know Shakari wins in a, in good fashion. And like on a race, like you yeah. know, she beats a. Good you don't want to wait for the results this to pop fun. up on the no, board. No, no, no. Like she, uh, you know, and I want to see that because I think she's going to go wild. I think the stadium will go wild. And then let's go forward a year. Let's then see, can Shelly Ann, at this stage in her career, come back and then take it back the following year? All right, yeah. hear me out. What if we just throw a Hungarian <laughs> in the race, just so the crowd goes even more? Okay, oh Vince McMahon. <laughs> this is the Vince McMahon thing. What if we transfer one of the Jamaicans' allegiance I mean, to Hungarian just for a day, to Hungary for a day? Just, just for a day to hear that yeah. crowd. Because or like Shelly Ann comes out like she was She's just, just like traded like to Hungary. <laughs> Can I'm you Hungarian imagine now. the crowd would go <laughs> wild? <laughs> but I, I would love to see how Shakari celebrates yeah, on track. Same. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, Shelly's, yeah. she's been here before. She's done it. And she, when she wins, she wins very gracefully. It's very classy. It's I know, very right? classy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm ready to Pinky see a little out. ratchet yeah. out yeah. there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of thing too, right? Like, when Good Gatlin won, it was like, hush to the crowd. And like, yeah. obviously there were people booing and, and everything like that. This crowd feels nice. Like, I don't think anyone would boo Shakari. But like. One woman it, got really mad at me today. Why? Because I was standing up during the last lap of the 10K. I got a tap on the shoulder to sit. And I turned oh. around and I was like, oh, it's the end of the race. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you supposed to stand at the end of a race? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so so uh, that, she would be booing. Yeah, so some of these fans, <laughs> yeah. I guess some of these fans, like, uh, they've been good fans. No, you no, found they, the one bad it's one. It's been amazing. Yeah. Okay. It's been amazing. No, that yeah. one yeah. 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 That one's getting mad at we us. Won't, we won't tarnish the whole stadium with that. Yeah. 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 Don't tarnish the, the Hungarian fans. We've got no, a couple more yeah. days left Jeez. here. Um, <laughs> no, she wasn't Hungarian. Okay. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Even better. Okay. <laughs> so let's shift over. Jasmine, I guess, like, women's 400 first round uh, was this morning. Oh. On the U.S. side of things, the biggest surprise was Britton Wilson that finishing hurt last. My soul. Being carted off in a wheelchair, like, that's never a good sign. Um, and then, I mean, Marlady Polino clocking the fastest time of the first round. Uh, she looks really impressive. I mean, just overall, her odds have improved to win this thing, I think. And Oh, absolutely. So, hey, I... And then on top Talitha of that, I guess... Talitha fought her way through. Talitha fought her way through. Like, it didn't look as didn't, smooth yeah. either. So, like... But I also don't feel like she looked that smooth at USA's, to be honest. And so, I'm trying to pay attention a little bit more to her to see if that's just how, that's how she, she runs. Or if that's just in a discomfort. So, I I'm think, not sure. I think two athletes today that stood out just how easy they looked. Uh, three... Sada looked great, mm -hmm. but I, I said Natalia Kazmarek. After what we saw earlier this season, Celestia, let's not sleep. Poland's then, close. <laughs> Poland yeah. is right Look. there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think there's this Irish lad. It is Rashida? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have like 400 meters. We haven't had uh, we haven't had somebody you know being that competitive in that event. Um, so that is unbelievable. Again for Ireland, small nation, for sprinters in Ireland. <laughs> the you sprint know. lads Of which back you home. are <laughs> the leader. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm rooting for her to get on that podium. Yeah. Did you see the tweet? I it retweeted it of uh, her putting her makeup on in the golf cart on the way to the track. Oh, oh, that's oh really? Great. <laughs> what? I love that. Putting some final <laughs> blush on. I don't know which. Which I is the paintbrush that. one? That's yeah. Uh, it could be consent. Could have been anything. I don't a paint. Know. I'm like a you paint have a brush daughter. And You're going to these things. <laughs> that's, that wasn't very helpful. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like the idea. Like that good use of cart time. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, uh, so, uh, other things from the first round, we had two Jamaicans, Candice McClode and Nikisha Price. They also ran 50-point low. Um, and then uh, Lika Claver bouncing back from the four by four mixed 4 by 4 Oh, touch on the Lika thing. Yeah, so Lika put out an Instagram story saying that there's a video surfacing on TikTok or something like that about... Uh, I just think kinda, our video. It's the, vi- it's the video that Caitlin put out, but a we lot of people... Yeah. Are making a big deal about her facial expressions while Femke is talking, and people are twisting this to be about like, oh look, she's angry at Femke. And what we said on the show last night was like, no, I think she looks angry at the media, being like, not angry at the media, but necessarily like prepared to defend she Femke is very if prepared. like, if she you make my it. girl cry, I am ready to shut this down. Yeah, and people have been twisting that, and so. Not us, but the internet. Uh, and so she... We just uh, want to clear that up, you guys. We're I don't even know the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> like, like. Well, also, like, I, I, I said, I popped over to the other room, and I was like, Jasmine, Caitlin, like, can you guys go on TikTok and check out what they're talking about? Like, who ripped our video? Because I'm more concerned about that. I'm like, that's our video. <laughs> like, and, like, that's not the message we want attached to it. So, uh, but she ran well today, so she bounced back. Probably had a good night's sleep to you know get the job done today. So, so w- we saw this. I don't know if this is a, or if we're ready to do the transition, but we saw it in the four hundred hurdles on the men's mm. side as okay. well. Yeah, perfect. The fifty point is the new forty eight point in the four hundred hurdles. On you know, Trevor Bassett was saying I think forty eight thirty four was the fastest time in the first round last year, and then this year I think he ran faster than that and was like third in his heat. These guys. Honestly, the 400 and the 400 hurdles on the men's side, they were blazing today. Yeah. It made no sense because you guys realize you have two more rounds. What are you doing? But it also shows that these people are just trying to make it on to the next round. And so they're just giving it all that they can. But what in the flying F are y'all doing? Relax. <laughs> it, it took me a second because I'm looking at all the results just kind of accumulated here. And uh, Carson Warham posted the 16th fastest time of the day, but that's because he literally just kind of he shut, he shut it down so soon. So well, like he, he, I think he shut it down at like uh, coming into that last hundred. Honestly, after that, he was just like, meh, let me just get over these hurdles. But he had to maintain that rhythm so I could stay in first. But after he was coming off that curb, you could see the gear switch where. I think it's the eighth hurdle he was actually coming in and he was cutting it a little bit close. And so he started to stutter a little bit and then he went over and then he was like, okay, let me continue to keep my rhythm so I don't mess up. Are we going to acknowledge (laughs) what is happening outside Um, right now? I don't know if our mics are picking this up, but so today is a national holiday. It's Independence Day. In Budapest. So like you guys can probably hear us, but... We are hearing the reverberations of like some really loud noises there outside. Are thousands of people outside. I think it's right because it, like they're like Noah Lyles won the hundred and they're just out there <laughs> really going crazy. It feels but like an earthquake. It does. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> Rye Benjamin looked great. C.J. Allen looked great. Uh, Dos Santos looked great. So like you I know, got some notes on him. Yeah, go, go for it. Him. It's my little notes. Okay, Allison was in heat one. He looked very smooth. It looks like his rhythm is back. Oh my god, you guys, there is Irish, not Irish, no, Hungarian, Hungarian music, music <laughs> playing out. He knows what Irish great. music sounds like. He's like, that's <laughs> not like, my tune. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting next to the Irish man right now, so Irish is stuck in my head. Um, and then we get to heat two. Trevor advanced to the next round. He got out really. hard art actually and (laughs) i was like man this man is running and then you could kind of see where it hit but i'm glad that he advanced on there's kind of two ways to approach if you're like the first section if you're a former medalist it's like get out hard and then chill the last hundred or chill the first 300 like wade van neerkirk did and then just like kick the last hundred and then just kick it in because that's literally what he did i'm like that man I love watching Warm Home go, and I'm excited to watch this final. I think these these guys are about to kick some. Yeah, you wonder, like, because he doesn't usually shut it down. Like, he kind of runs hard through the rounds. You just wonder, is that him, like, saving that energy for, like, a serious fight? What? Is, what time are the fireworks going off? <laughs> you guys are so sorry. <laughs> I can't believe what was that. <laughs> 
You, you guys not ignore this in the background. Yeah, you guys can't hear this, but like, there's literally about to be like a massive explosion behind us. Can you but, take your mic outside? but anyway, we have a camera have that's a set camera. up outside, yeah. so if there are fireworks, oh, yes. we, will, we will we will turn to this. Oh, look, the light show is starting. This is so close to our balcony. All right, so for the people okay. listening to this in podcast form, you can't see what's happening, so we will proceed. Um, so with all this talk about the track surface being the same as like the Tokyo Olympics, I'm ready for a world record in the 400 meter hurdles. Yes. Final. Oh, and, the, yes. and I liked what Dos Santos was saying after. Like, I feel like we've had this idea from afar. It's like, oh, you know, he's back from injury. We're gonna see. You know, it, it's really Rye versus Carson. He is fully counting himself in it, which I think is really cool. And then also, I mean. Trevor and CJ both threw the, their names in the hat, yes. which you have to do if you're an elite athlete. You can't go in and be like, I don't think I can win. Like, that'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I was talking about how Adele Michal was kind of thinking that way, and look what happened today. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, real quick aside, uh, tell the CJ Allen story of how he, you made him stop. Oh, yeah. CJ uh, was about to walk by. The morning, the morning sessions. No one ever necessarily like always stops when it's the first round because you're t- booking it off. Like you know, you've got two more. We'll talk to you again. And so I was kind of feeling a little, de- I don't know, depressed about the fact that I'd showed up early and no one was stopping to talk to me. And CJ started to walk by, and I had breakfast with some of the guys from Asics, and I, I was like. CJ, you got to stop. Asics is going to kill me if we don't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then as soon as CJ heard Asics, he was like, oh, like, perked up. It was like, all right, I'll talk and gave a great interview. Um, so what I think I'm going to start doing is I'm going to use that for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, Mondo, uh, Red Bull told me yeah, I yeah. have to <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> You're going to kill me. They're going to take my Red Bull money. Um, and so, yeah. Or, like, the other idea I had was, like, I have the j- Japanese thing, the Japanese stuff. And I was thinking it would be funny to just have every single country lined up. Mac, you should be showing whatever the heck is going on. Look at this. Well, no Lyles. 2023 World <laughs> Champion. Welcome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There are fireworks going off behind us. But uh, my point was going to be that I need to get every single kit so that way whenever someone was coming through, I would just be from their country. So, like, someone from Bulgaria is walking through, doesn't want to stop for me, throw on my Bulgaria hat or kit, and there you go. All right. I like the idea of talking over this beautiful fireworks show that is happening behind us. So this looks great. This is the type of thing that you would throw on a TV just for ambiance in your living room. So we're going to add a little bit of track talk to it. Let's move over to the men's 400 first round. The biggest surprise, the U.S. champion Bryce Edmond doesn't make it through. But then the two heavy favorites, Wade Van Niekerk oh and uh, Stephen Gardner, Advance. Okay, but aside from them advancing, can we talk? How do you say this Norway kid's name? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Norwegian guy. He oh. was. Havard? Havard. Yeah, it's like Harvard without the R. Havard. That man, 44 39 national record, but I'm concerned because you ran that fast in the first round. Yeah. Well, you, the, the thing that's so interesting is he was so. The, the Europeans talk about the 400 meter record. All the time. The European record, I think, has been around 44, 33, has been around for like 40 years or something. And there's so many good guys that have gotten really close to getting it, but haven't. And this kid almost just showed up and almost broke it in the first round. And, you know, now he's the Norwegian 400 meter record holder as well, which is pretty good. I am, there was three national records broken. Three national records broken in a prelim round like not semis not final in the prelims so these people they were going after it today so many 44s give me some what? fireworks for the three <laughs> national records three national records deserve give me, some fireworks give me one two three <laughs> boom there they are there they go um <laughs> steven gardner olympic champion let's go world ahead. champion it's just so easy for him to run a 44. It's he kind of amazing. So good. And then Wade looked 
better than I think he had. Like, he's had some good races, but they looked like they were some effort. But today, he came out with an unbelievable amount of confidence, was really sitting back far off the pace, and then hit the home straight away, took like three hard steps, was in the lead, and was able to cruise it in. I would say, in terms of the buy-sell, I wasn't super hot on Wade having any shot against Steven Gardner previously. And after what I saw today, I'm now I'm a little bit more convinced that we have a race on our hands. All right, so right now, who do you think wins between the two of them? I'm still going to go guard. Oh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm taking him. I, I'm fully confident after watching Kim run today. You see, I got the fireworks going That's on, you guys. They fireworks are for Steven Gardner. Right now. <laughs> in the, in the uh, Bahamian color. Look, if Ryan Krauser could throw a championship record with two blood clots, we can do a podcast with, with fireworks, fireworks behind us. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good, Kyle. Um, all right. So that's the first round of the men's 400. Give me some fireworks for Vernon Norwood advancing. That Woo! is good for our boy. Before we move to the 10,000, should we hit, hear a little bit about what happened in the field today? Yeah, give us Jasmine's field event report set to the Hungarian Independence Day <laughs> fireworks show. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let me go back over to our lovely notes over here. Let's, <laughs> it's so loud. You guys hear this? That, that's what's happening in our background currently, so no big deal, guys. Um, this reminds me of Disney World, like <laughs> Fantasmic or something like that. Absolutely amazing. But the woman's hep, Katarina Johnson Thompson took first, 67 40. Super Anna, clutch. Like, oh my goodness. How Anna I Hall. Can we talk about how she hauled ass Whoa. in that 800? Wow, we're going to have to put the explicit tag on this Sorry. podcast. <laughs> Oops. But she really took it out, and I mean, she brought um, KTJ. KJT. KJT, sorry, you know, J JT, all around, but brought her into a PB in her 800, and clearly everyone is so happy about this with the fireworks <laughs> going on, because they're I think like, that was it. That might have been the last the one. <laughs> we're, uh, we're back. All right, so KJT. And then um, I'm probably going to pronounce her name wrong Anoik, Anok. Anu oh, yeah, yeah. Better. I know you're talking about a uh, nuke better, yes. Third place, but it was really tragic today, actually, because we had Talia Brooks, who was sitting fourth, and had she got a mark in, I truly think that she would have left with the medal today, but she ended up no marking, and so in the long jump, in the woman's long jump, and so with that, she dropped all the way down to 20th, and Oh, it was just so heartbreaking. You Why just saw just her break back? down. So I'm pretty sure her coach did have her move back because she fouled the first two and then going into the last one. There's just no way your coach doesn't move you back after that. But a lot of the times when you've got two fouls, you're just like, I really want to get one in. And sometimes mentally you try to overcompensate. And I feel like she probably reached to, for the board instead of actually having a better takeoff position. I, I think in that situation, you just walk up to the line and you do a nice standing broad jump. <laughs> <laughs> you just go seven feet out and be like, this is my mark. <laughs> I mean, honestly, something is better than nothing when it comes to the HEP. And so very, I, my heart goes out to her. I know it's something that she wanted. She was so close to having a medal possibly. And she, by the time Javelin came around, she pulled out of the competition. Mm. Um, Shari, she won the javelin, which was cool. She got a little PB. It was nice to see Shari make her first team, Shari Hawkins, make her first team and be within the top five, I think, top five or six. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say so, on the HEP. I mean, I think something that is really notable is that KJ KJT <laughs> came, All the letters. came in with a 207 personal best, ends up running 205, very clutch, the 2019 world champion. She was all set up to potentially win the Olympics in 2020. Yeah. And then with the pushback of the pandemic, ends up, I believe, rupturing her Achilles. And so it's been a long journey back since 2019. And, and, you know, we all had a tough pandemic, but that is a really tough way for an athlete to have to, you know, being taking your fitness and everything and life and livelihood during you know that time 
when you should have been winning Olympic medals. I so. want to know what was going on around that time with all these Achilles injuries. I feel like during that time frame, there was so many Achilles injuries yeah. that were happening to athletes, and it's kind of insane that it, it turned out that way. But I'm so glad to see her back. So deserved. I know she made Great Britain proud. Hopefully, Anna can come back and get her licked back next year at the Olympics. Hey, listen, Anna is making progress on that podium. It was bronze yeah. last year, silver this year. There's only one more stand that, like, you Look, know, she's got to level up to. She's leveling up each time she comes around. And I know there had been the rumors of her not being as sharp. So, yeah. I mean, first of all, for you to come out and get a silver medal, not at your best. I'm it's still... Asking. Like, 6,720 points. <laughs> yeah. Very impressive. It must be a difficult event to get right training-wise. You know, and especially, like, you know, Anna's still so young in it, so I'm sure she's going to be able to look back. Like, you know, I got to see her a couple of times in Europe this summer, like, and, you know, we were talking about the amount of times missed 9 to 5, like, you know. And then she did a lot of travelling this summer as well to then finish it here. So I'm sure she's going to be able to kind of look back and maybe also think about how things can be refined, as any athlete would leading into the Olympic year. Um, so, yeah, that's, that, that'll she, be she exciting. Com- she, she seems to compete way more than other multis, right? Like, and the, maybe... It's she public does- practices, I feel like yeah, and yeah. at a high level but the travel maybe does get to you i don't know like yeah. i i'm i should not be giving anyone any advice on how to do the multis but yeah. it, she, she just saying compared to some other athletes we saw a lot of her this year which is great good for the sport anything yeah. anna hall is doing is good for the sport yeah you know what's um, kind of cool it's kind of like from here it's sort of like where does she pick up the pieces and go like there's there's not enough like uh, Gotsi's was like the big multi-event competition earlier and then like there's this one but now she's competed in so many of these diamond leagues like in different events that she's yeah. gonna have a couple different options I think it'll probably be 400 or 400 meter hurdles that she's got some diamond league points uh, to really kind of compete there uh, next month so uh, yeah I mean but the that, sky's the limit maybe, maybe that's another thing too is that she's so good at some individual events that she was running really hard to get really good times at diamond leagues and like the championships at the end of the summer so like maybe maybe that's something to look at too like you know it's like you know you're trying you're almost putting yourself on the platform of being able to get to the world championships in the 400 hurdles you know? I, uh, I will say though I was really relieved to see that it seemed like she was very happy afterwards yeah. like it wasn't a hey if I don't win yeah. the gold then this is yes. a bad week for me but you know like you still saw her smiling happy with the silver it was great seeing her if you got the, the bronze you got the silver <laughs> that, There's only one left to, that to hit the cycle. That poor baby was well, on that track for a long time. But the thing is, is it's like it's not going to get any easier next year with Sulek coming back, Nafi Tiam coming back. Yeah. So like the war that kind of Anna Hall teased at USA's, where she said like this competition was going to be a war. I feel like maybe today we got a really big battle, but next year's war. Shawnee Miller Weibo said that 2026. I think she is going to Maltese. Really? Um, also, we should just note that she had her son four months ago. Four, four months, months ago. Today, ago. Today, or and so came out and ran 52 seconds a month ago. We saw her competing in a heptathlon. Turns out her, her sister was doing one and just needed some company. <laughs> it should have been oh like one goodness. of those things where it's like, uh, in order for the result to count, you need three people in the competition. Yeah. She's like, ah, you know what? I'll do it. <laughs> Um, all right, give us the long jump uh, reaction. Woman's long jump. I was actually pretty impressed with it today. Um, one of the better ones that we've had in a while. I see the progression coming back. Typically at a world championships or Olympics, you see more seven meters going on when it comes time to the final. But this time around, I'm just happy that we had a seven meters. We've got some 690s. We had some 680s. Overall, Ivana Valletta, she came out with gold. I feel so bad for her because this new little toe rolling rule on the board has been eating her alive. Eating her alive to little bits and pieces. And she is the one that's been affected by it the most sadly. Um, I was watching her first attempt and I was just like, she got all the board, but knowing that rule, it's gonna come up as a foul. And sure enough, it came up as a foul. She went, did her second jump, then she jumped a 7.05. And then in the fifth round, the girl wants to come out with a 7.14, with a world lead, and she was out there killing the game. Um, Tara, I'm so proud of her. She came out with her first medal. She took silver. Um, You could tell she was a little frustrated (laughs) 
<laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. They're in the <laughs> Polish colors for uh, Valetta. Or, no, wait. <laughs> not, she's not Polish, is she? She's Serbian. <laughs> Serbian colors. <laughs> the Serbian <laughs> colors are going. Um, <laughs> This is honestly. This is crazy. They said it's the greatest fireworks. Guys, the in podcast Europe. listeners can't see. The Sorry, fireworks. guys. You guys are getting FOMO from how good. Like, switch over to YouTube. Go watch the YouTube once you're done with the podcast. Truly, really one of the okay? worst podcast ideas I could imagine is like, what if we just narrated fireworks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom! Another one, and there's another, another one. one. This is so great. You won't believe it. There's another. <laughs> what, but uh, what a what a weekend to have come to Hungary for the World Championships and hitting it on National Day and experiencing this and it's only day two of the World Championships. Hungary is pretending like they do this every day. They're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, this whole thing. All the time. Every day Sunday, life. what do you mean? <laughs> just another but, day in Hungary, um, Shelly Ann, if you want to put on that uniform tomorrow. <laughs> you want to switch over and put ours on. <laughs> we got mad fireworks. <laughs> All right. Um, so Tara ended up with second with a 691. You could see that she was getting frustrated. She did that jump on her first jump, and she could not improve that mark. You could see she was really going for it. And <laughs> at one point, she walked up to her coach, and she was like, bro, what's going on? Like, what is happening? She was trying to figure it out. So you could tell that she was frustrated. But, I mean, in that frustration, you're still walking out with your first medal, a silver medal at that. Come back and get your lift back next year, girl. Okay, please. She can get in diamond you. leagues now. Yeah, yes. No more. <laughs> there should be no Politics. questions asked. Like, Tara, if you can't get into a diamond league, girl, I will fight them myself. Like, we could catch me outside because there's no reason for it. And we're hoping to get Tara on the show uh, over the next couple days. So hopefully we can get her here. And I'm sure she already said that she would like to come on the show yeah. when I saw her at the team meeting. So Well, what's I'm great, sure too, is that, like, <laughs> I saw Josh Kerr in the mix zone and... And uh, I said to him, I was like, oh, so what, well, we're going to get to it, David. Uh, Jakob's celebration, like, with, like, 200 meters to, or 100 meters to go, where he's, like, pumping up the crowd. And I said, uh, he's like, I, I, got, I would get in trouble, like, uh, with my real feelings. I got in trouble last year. So I'm going to say this. And he just gave, like, a very political answer. And that was the last question I asked him. I said, uh, all right, we'll get your real feelings when you come over to Sidious House. He goes, yeah. <laughs> so this is where uh, the athletes can let loose a little bit. There's no uh, bleep buttons here. Um, <laughs> all right. And then third place was Alina Rotaru Kotman. Her sixth attempt. This is why world athletics, it's so important for everyone to get all six jumps and don't cut people off because on her sixth attempt, is when she came into that bronze medal position, mm. which was absolutely insane to watch. Came out with a, I think, I believe it was a PB of 688. Um, Maybe amazing. the Diamond League should learn something about this format. Like, I really think that they should because. Mm. Just a thought. Always, it's all a six, somebody always comes out in their sixth jump and they do something great, whether it's taking the lead if they're already in the top three or putting themselves in medal contingent. And Overall, I mean, it was a great competition. I was a little sad to see that Jasmine couldn't get her rhythm in today. She was frustrated. That was also another heartbreaking moment watching. I hate watching the athletes get sad about it. Not fun. But should we talk about the hammer? Don't you guys want to be Hungarian? That's the theme. That, that, like, that was the loudest roar in the stadium today by far. When louder they, than this? Louder than this. It was crazy. When I mean, the, truthfully. Yeah. I can't believe anything's louder than this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that they may have been louder. That hammer competition was pretty exciting to watch. So if you guys didn't get to watch it, I don't know. I think maybe you could rewatch it on, where is this, Peacock? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you could probably rewatch that competition on Peacock. Um, first place was Ethan Katzberg. He threw an 81.25, which was a Canadian national record. Yeah, Sam was going crazy for that. Yeah. Freaking crazy. He looks like a real Viking as well, too. Threw it on his fifth throw. So these guys were going back and forth at it. Um, Wojic Nowick, you know, Wiki, no yeah, yeah, yep, okay. Um, 8102 meters, and then the Hungarian Ben Salaz 8082 with a season's best. And when I tell you, the crowd is so loud in that stadium, especially if you're Hungarian. I was getting chills every time the Hungarians were out there competing, and it didn't matter how well they were doing, if they came back with a medal, the country let them know how proud they are of them, just representing them on that field yeah. and track. All right, hammer throw. The Hungarians love hammer throw and fireworks. <laughs> um, all right, 
Let's t- do a little distance talk. All Jasmine, right. if you want to stick around. Great. Uh, or you can go take off because I think Caitlin might be coming back soon from, from the mix zone. She might so. love to join this 10K yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to leave this leave mic for her. Leave an empty seat for her, yeah. <laughs> All right. David, you've been like itching and scratching in that seat. I've been watching you because you just want to talk about Jakob Binga Britson. Uh, so... Uh, Obviously, uh, did he post the fastest time in the first round? I, I, you know, Kyle, give me a rundown. I don't even interviews. look at the times anymore. No, actually, I was going to say I actually I have splits, but I don't even have finish times. It doesn't matter. Well, actually, it's so kind of nice. Yeah, like this yeah. is what this was the dream. Oh no, yeah, and 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 champ, that's the great thing about championships. Times don't matter. Yeah. So what um, did we see, David? So are we going to start off with the women or the men? Uh, ladies first, then. Okay, yeah. So two heats. Um, nothing major out of the first heat. I do think actually Chip Scherzer from Kenya. I think she might be a medal contender. Yeah. I thought she looked like she was just cruising. There was no f- uh, push, and I think she was kind of... Like, you have Kira McGean, you have Corey in the race. Um, they positioned themselves well. Um, but I just thought Chip Scherzer, I was looking at her, I was like, when I was seeing her, like I was like, wow, she is cruising away very easy here. Um, For those who aren't familiar with Chip Scherzer... Nelly Chip Scherzer, yeah. She's super young. Coming to this year, she, I think, had a 201 800 meter best, but had only ever run 411 in the 1500. Really had only ever raced in Kenya before. And at the start of this year, came at, or maybe she had like a, a world U20 or something, but like on the circuit, never really been on the circuit. Mm-hmm. This year, she came out, she was second at the Hanglo Games, ran 358 behind Safan Hassan. If we remember when Safan came out of nowhere to run a fast 1500 following the marathon. Yeah, well, she and his Safan, uh, actually, she ran the 10K today before that in yeah, yeah, yeah. So second in that was um, Chip Cheer Cheer and just totally dominated. Yeah. And I think it, you're 100% right when we're thinking of like, oh, who are the potential yeah. metal contenders outside of Faith and Sifan? You know, we have the Kira McGeans and the Jess Halls and the Corey McGees and all these other athletes. Now I'm like, I don't know, that might be our favorite. Yeah. And of course, the Ethiopians. Would yeah. Of course be in that conversation. No, definitely. So like that, definitely Kip Scherzer. Like, and I, I, I wasn't really too aware of her coming into the season either. She's right? super was, young. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, watching her there today, I thought she looked fairly effortless. He too then was like it honestly could have been a final you know the way it ran uh you had uh, fate won it you had deribi from ethiopia uh second and then you had had hassan third deribi took it out they went out in uh have it here where do i have it here they went out in 61 seconds first lap uh, the top three went 355 laura muir was fourth in 356 season's best katie snowden first time under four minutes ran 356 um it looked, when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, God, uh, Jess Hall isn't really on great form today. She ran 3.57. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, oh, she's out. And then I went back to look at the results. I was like, oh, yeah, no, just really good race. And then you the Irish girl, Sarah Healy, who actually is the third Irish person ever in history behind Sonia and Kira to break four minutes into 1,500. She didn't make it true, um, but she's made some improvements this year since joining... Um, uh, Jenny Meadows' husband to their group down in South Africa, so great to see that paying off. And uh, yeah, and then you had actually Adele Tracy got a Jamaican record yeah. uh, for seventh place, 358. Um, and uh, yeah, so didn't make it through. No, didn't make it through. <laughs> it's yeah. all unfortunate. Well, that, uh, that heat was clearly Savage. the faster yeah. of the two. And I mean, after. Even Safan was up front early on, you know, didn't want to get too far away from the the front of the race because there were so many women who would have been capable of holding a fast pace, which is exactly what they did, why they went so fast. I guess, David, from everyone you saw today, is there anyone that now you're higher on yeah I, I i think previously. i think this is going to be between the african countries um i just i can't Caleb, see uh ran 354 417 this year yeah. she looked great in the first yeah heat. um i think um i'm not convinced about hassan uh i think she's thrown herself into three events but i don't think i think maybe she could meddle or that but uh and i think i don't know i feel like even the way she went last night and the way she ta- attacked a bit today, I feel there's a little bit of bluffing there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe I'm eating my words here. I think you just it's fate. It's going to fate. Um, and then Deribi looked really good and Kip Scherzer. So 
I think uh, they're up. It just depends on what way the race goes. Um, does, uh, like, uh, the Rebe, the Ethiopian girl, she took it out today. Um, does she take it out knowing that uh, fate is going to come through and, and pull away, but then they've made enough of a gap in the field that, like, you know, nobody else is there? Um, will it be fast? Will it be slow? Well, we just have to wait and see. Uh, <laughs> the funniest thing was, it was like, I... Got it, faith stopped for me today in the oh, mix zone. Oh, thank God. Yeah. And she actually like was like, oh, hey, give me a high five. Pretended like nothing happened <laughs> and yesterday. And I was like, you hurt my feelings yesterday. <laughs> um, but no. And then I kind of asked her, I was like, then I was kind of in a position where it's was like, oh, now we're doing an interview. I was like, you're going to win. What, what, yeah. what do I ask? And so I was like, what kind of final are you expecting? A fast one or a tactical one? Because last year you just, we knew the medals were after one lap. And she was like, yeah, who knows? We'll see how I feel. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, I, I, who's the bigger lock? Faith, Faith is a much bigger lock than Yaka. Yeah, Faith. Because yeah. Faith yeah. has proven time and time again that she can really just go out and do it 100% on her own. I know that Yaka at some point this year was like, oh, I'm the rabbit, yeah. which is like a funny quote and everything. But the truth is that if you have pace for lights and a rabbit, it is a t different race than when yeah. you have to yeah. do it tactically. No, no, yeah, it's different. Like, I think uh, Faith it would be a clear favorite. I think, like, looking at, at today, I think if Faith, whatever way she ran it, she's guaranteed. You know, yeah, she's looking like she's winning it. Yeah. Now, I do just want to give a shout out to Corey McGee. Our, our American fans. What you say? Her third straight final. Third straight. Made the final in Tokyo. Made the final in Eugene. Made the final here. And I was like, how did she do the first time that she made Worlds? Let me go back to 2013. To, I was like, let me go back to uh, 2017 and check. And I was like, oh. No, maybe it was further, 2015, and then I do. Oh, oh, it was 2013. That was the summer Mac and I met. Yeah. Wow, what a moment. Because Corey uh, was there, she was chasing the standard at uh, Houston. So it's like she's really come a long way in the last decade. And so you know, just the consistency of Corey and just the way she raced today was so composed. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sinclair did not end up having the race that she wanted. She never found the spot. Just kept moving up on the outside she was able to run smooth but it was just all in lane two and lane three trying to yeah. find a, a, a spot where she could really just settle in meanwhile Corey was surrounded by on all sides just, but it was you know very comfortable being able to stay that tight in a pack something that she's found herself on a lot of times is the rail they're very good friends and just was able to remain patient wait for yeah. things to open up and uh, just ran like a veteran they just released the dragons there. Yeah. <laughs> it was it just got yeah. really loud outside. Yeah, I think with 1500 meter running, I think unless you're like a clear f standout favorite that you can just run out in lane the out in lane 2. You, it's so important how you run the heats of a 1500. I think of all the endurance events, it's the trickiest one out there to run because like 5Ks, even in the heats, it's still going to, it's, it'll string out at some point. Like you're not going to deal too much with being boxed in. You see the anxiousness in the athletes. You can clearly see watching people if they're comfortable or not. And like you see a lot of the time like this one up, one down, one up, one down. And you see someone comes from the back, makes a move to come all the way up. And then the next thing they're back around again, they're back at the you end of the field. You get spit out the back. Yeah. So, and like looking like, you know, looking at, you know, you can see, you know, Jakob today went straight to the back, chilled out. And I think like, I'd like to, I'd like to actually break down energy consumption and sort of exertion of splits even throughout the races, because I genuinely feel like that people are shooting themselves in the, in the foot by how they're tactically running it. I know Willis always was a guy who loved to hug the rail. And like, if I was telling athletes, I would say, put yourself in on the rail, do not panic. If you're still in there with 300 to go, 200 to go, 100 to go, do not worry because everyone comes wide anyway when they're sprinting. And I just think, I think if you're not the clear favorite and you're hoping to make the final, I think you just have to get in and stop moving. I agree. And especially now, you know, it's six, six people, but it is just incredible. And, you know, Nikki, they ran 359, I believe. Or, or flat. flat, but technically a personal best, and you know it mm. wasn't able to. Well, no, the Monaco it, split is faster. No, yeah, that's what I mean. Like technically, it depends how you look at it. Yeah. So has run faster in a split, but not in an open fifteen hundred. And it's just when there's that sort of depth, you really do just need everything to go perfect. You have to see these fireworks <laughs> out there. This bridge is. <laughs> Oh on gosh. fire on fire it's a fire waterfall <laughs> it's crazy um 
this is I love hungry. Um, so David, and then another thing that I think is really important, and we were just talking about this in the hundred is for a lot of athletes to be able to come in and almost be invisible, yeah. you know, not do anything crazy. Yeah. If you can just cruise, sit in the middle, make it through, walk off the track yeah. and two athletes. who I do think really accomplished that today that haven't shown the full depth of their fitness yet is Kira McGee and Laura Muir. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. I think they showed, they showed seasoned, they showed, you know, seasoned runners. Um, you know, you have, you're going to always have your clear standouts that they can, you know, run it whatever way they want. But through the sem- through the heats and through the semis, I think both Kira and Corey, very similar approaches. Um, you know, so definitely looking forward to that final. All right. Let's shift over gears to the men's 1500. Uh, because we've touched on it enough, but now let's officially focus on it. Yard Nagu's fastest time of the first round, 332.69. Just absolutely commanded that race. He looked so good. Um, Kip Sang got out really hard. I think Nagus was out wide. And just seeing the way he floated around. Because Kip, Kip Sang went out in 55 seconds. He did this yesterday. Yeah, he went <laughs> This is his new move. He goes out hard, convinces everyone, we're going, up, we're going yeah. for it. And then he just slowly <laughs> slows it yeah. down. You don't even realize yeah. it. Before you know it, you're running like a 60 plus. And then it's like, ah! I think I'll start going again. Yeah, and they he picks it up and has a clear went, line uh, of the finish. 55, 59, 58. There's um, a 60 in there probably. Yeah. <laughs> and you look at the finish line photo and it's utter chaos closer to the rail. But then on the far side, Nordis is like thumbs up to David McCarthy in the stands. Is like, I, I, you told me I didn't look that impressive in the first round. How about this? No, but what I said was that when the pace is slower, his kick isn't good. When the pace is fast, his kick is good. Exactly what happened here. Now, what I will say here, just um, <laughs> while this okay. photo is up here, right? We have Yard here. Now, Yard is definitely a favorite, right? There's a lean here, right? There's a kind of a, you know, making sure getting through. He looked unbelievably good. And I'm trying to pick my favorites for this final, apart from Jakob, are between Yard and Josh Kerr. At first I thought Yard, and then I saw, the, uh, I saw Josh run. I think Josh looks ridiculously easy. And if you look at the photo that we have of um, uh, Jakob and Josh, there's even another one there of the two of them looking at each other. You know, they're, uh, they're, they're very comfortable. So... I. Uh, I talked to both of them. Josh was like, yeah, I, I mean, they're both expecting this final to be faster than the Tokyo Olympics. Oh, Jakob said that. No, 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 no. Oh, ja- yeah, right. Jakob didn't stop for the American media. He only stopped. Because Jakob's the, the one who's going to make it faster. Well, yeah, no, yeah. I, well, I have, I, have, I have some other theory in my mind. Spit it out. <laughs> okay, so I feel Jakob, just looking at today, and I think looking at today he could do it, I think... Wouldn't it be unbelievable, like, if he won this from being a kicker, right? Like, I think he's always trying to just put the doubters to bed. Like, he's like, you know, he can only win it if he goes out hard. He got beaten by, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jake Whiteman last year in a kick. I personally believe uh, Jakob could, would be the fastest kicker in this field. I think we haven't seen Jakob speed because of the, how fast the race are always run. I, I think it'll go fast because of Kipsang. Mm. I think Kip Sang will make it fast. If he does the same thing, gets yeah, out, yeah. and then doesn't let it settle. Yeah, exactly. Um, if it didn't, I don't know. Yes, of course, we have the other option. I'm just, I'm just playing with that idea of, like, Jakob wanting to win it, but win it in a style that, like, he can just really show to... Like, he doesn't just want to beat But everyone. why risk it? Why risk it? Why not just... Um, I think win how you've been winning all year. Yeah, but I think that's Jakob. I think he's always trying to show how much better he is and how he can do things in different ways and that. Um, I it's like El Garouge. I'll show you how good I am. I'm going to do it the hard way. Yeah, yeah. Very famous. Well, I mean, kind yeah, of yeah, exactly. No, no, exactly. And um, so... Yeah, I was just, it was only when I watched the heat today when he sat back, he sat right out the back and he came around and he came up easy. Like Josh Kerr is a ma- massive kicker. Like he came from behind Josh. So, you know, I'm thinking that would be a sick way to do it. <laughs> um, I'd love to see him do it that way. Um, it would make it far more riskier for him, 100%. Um, but, you know, that's the, that's I the don't, gamble. I, don't <laughs> risk it. If, if you're Jakob, don't risk it. Just win how you've been winning yeah. all year. But, and uh, like but, but I think Kip Sang is going to make it. I think Kip Sang is going to go out and make it fast from the start anyway. So Did you see the quote? Uh, I think it was in the Irish Independent of Luke McCann talking. And he, he asked Jakob before the, in a call room. He was like, how do you always make it look so easy? And Jakob said, because it is easy. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we're feeling confident. Yeah. And, yeah. and sorry, we didn't even like really talk about um, that. Well, actually, sorry. First of all, just because there was a couple of things I took notes on on that first heat. Um, you could write a book on yeah. these races. So I thought uh, we spoke about Nordis. Uh, Katir out. Oh, Katir Katir's and Michal pulled yeah. out. Right? So he was definitely somebody I was putting in there. I don't know if it may be more in the 5K, but anyway. And then also uh, Laris, the Niels. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, Danish kid. National senior record. Um, like, again, we thought how experienced he looked last night running again today. You're talking about strength. He's coming back, putting the rounds back to back. Um, not a medal contender, but I think very impressive nonetheless. Um, Can I hedge my bet on Cole Hawker a little bit here? Go for it. I don't know. Uh, I, I know I said yesterday, uh, if you're 14th in London, you're not going to come out and win. And I, I still no, don't. You're changing your mind a little bit? Well, I, now I, I would say I do see the path to a medal. Yeah. Uh, he's looking yeah. way more comfortable. I like what he did today. Same. Look, he's someone who probably runs well in a slightly slower race. He was able to go out, establish the lead, and then keep it relatively modest. Yeah. And in doing so, really set himself up well. He ran it well. Um, and just in terms of both having Yared and Cole in the final, they just both ran tactically really smart. Yeah. And I was saying this about Yared is like, oh, he's so fit. Like, of course, you know, he, he's going to beat the other Americans. And Cole was so good a couple of years ago. Of course, he's going to beat the college kids. And But now they, they've both been on more international, like, in those races and are learning how to run them. And they both look like they knew what they were doing out there. And the ability to pick a spot and get to a spot, that is fitness as well. You know, you're not, that's not just knowing where you should be. The ability to actually execute on that is tied you, to fitness. you have to be super fit to have a relaxed mind in all of this chaos yeah, yeah and i was impressed by cole today and you know i wouldn't be sup like i would like i'd put him in there as like a fort and uh, not to say he couldn't sneak a medal yeah you know because he just needs to be in that contention to use that speed of his um and then i suppose we got to talk about Jakob <laughs> waving to the crowd coming yeah. around off the final bend like so again this is it He's kicking, right? Slow race, he's kicking. And he still has time to look to the crowd and wave him up. Right? <laughs> so, so, I'm sorry, it's hard not to be impressed with this guy. He, the, uh, Jakob's not doing any interviews with like American media yeah. or just any English-speaking media. He's just doing interviews in Norwegian. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, he was doing an interview right next to, and I was just like, all right, in the off chance he answers something in English, I'll get something. So he does his whole interview in Norwegian, and I record it, and then I was like, well, now what am I going to do with this thing on my phone? <laughs> so I just uploaded it to YouTube, so we do have an interview with Jakob. It just happens to be not in English. Any, any but, Norwegians out there? Yeah, so if you're Norwegian, you can watch it, and you'll understand what he's saying. But then I did catch what the Norwegian journalist said. Like, it's, uh, someone else was like, so what did he say? And he's like, well, he said that the crowd was asleep, so I needed to, like, wake them oh. up. And I was like, all right. So I just titled it, Jakob Bingerbritsen explains why he celebrated early. Brackets <laughs> in Norwegian. In so, the original Norwegian yeah. form. So then, like, But he did know. that last year in Eugene as well in the 5,000, didn't he? Didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Didn't he wave to and, and he went out for his water. But he this was a bit more of an aggressive. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Good for the sport. Yeah. Good Fact. for the sport. All right. 10,000 meters. Let's close it out with the men's 10,000 meter. Uh, just recap real quick. So, the, I mean, the last, again, these things start off as a jog fest. Yeah. And slowly but surely, there's carnage that kind of happens. And really, we had a pack of five with just mostly... Ugandans, Ethiopians, Kenyans, Kenyans and uh, Mohamed. Yeah. Who, like, I was fairly impressed by. I was like, yeah. this is the best Mo Mohamed has looked in a while. Um, and it was good to see him back. He just didn't have the wheels to close as hard as yeah. Chepta yeah. guy did. Now, real funny story, kind of, from where I was sitting. I was sitting in the stands, and the Ugandan team was right next to me. And one guy uh, if you could find it in the results uh who was the third Ugandan in the race who went out really hard and was leading it total pacer like he was a uh so his name was i can't even see it. i whatever it was <laughs> jo Joel Aiko there you go i can uh, the font wasn't big enough for me um he 
comes off the track after you know running 5k or 6k whatever he oh he didn't finish no he didn't finish because literally was, pacing but like, he was but pacing he was, 100 but, meters but ahead. no one went no one went with him <laughs> so i don't know what happened but he <laughs> he was he was t- t- that was his job okay he went to he the goes, first came so to 46 do a good job are they happy what, with what, what, they what? were ecstatic <laughs> for him because what happened is you know a 10k is really long where that four minute walk through the mix zone this man Made it through the mix zone and then watched the rest of the race from the stands with us. What? Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> got a beer. And he, well, so he, uh, the race finishes and Cheptegei <laughs> wins, and the Ugandans are congratulating and uh, going nuts for Cheptegei, but then also congratulating Joel. I, I don't think he did anything. I don't think that's happened. I'm thinking They're like, last congratulations, year. you did it. And it's like, what was the race plan? But whatever it was, flawlessly executed. I, I tell you what, I was impressed with it. That actually, Chep the guy was leading that chase pack for majority yes, of the race. That was impressive. And and I was that. And when I was looking, I was like, oh man, why? Like they were like, clicking off sixty fours, yeah, and that's what really broke it wasn't everyone. Aragawa eventually took over yeah. and did really and. That's what broke the Americans yeah. once he took over. But yeah, no, Jot was not scared to take it early yeah. as well. No, so but um, uh, yeah, like he was ridiculous. Like when he went at, and we were just we were at the kind of that six hundred meter mark, and I'm not, I can't remember. I don't think he went for a sponge around and come down the back. But like he went out real wide with six hundred to go, and he didn't start picking it up at <laughs> Why all. Why were they offering sponges? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. really hundred to go. Well, yeah. Six hundred to go. Yeah, yeah. No one's taking sponges anymore. We're racing. Yeah, but well, he, the guy who's taking the sponges is the guy who's like in fifteenth place. Like <laughs> if he had that plan in his mind, like the the, the pace he went at with five hundred to go, you'd almost assumed he had it planned. But it didn't look like he had it that plan because with six hundred to go, he was coming wide. And he was still cruising, cruising, cruising. And then next thing, he just went. And it was so hard. It was almost like, yeah, you have another lap. You know that. Like, yeah, that's, I, it was so aggressive. Yeah. That. Like, and I'm always so impressed when people can go that hard and not have the fear of like hitting the wall. Because he couldn't have gone any harder. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, 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 what did we say? 121 last yeah, 600? Yeah, 121 was the last 600. And he didn't get and going until 500. It wasn't until 500. So presumably, he had like a 15 or 16 in there yeah. and then hit it. And he closed in 53. But whatever. I don't know if, what a good 500 split is. I'd have yeah. to crunch some numbers. But that's what he did. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one race under Chep, uh, Chep guy's legs. Three rounds under... Inga Britson's legs, like the five K is going to be really entertaining. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, we were talking about this after the race. The thing about Cheptegei now is he's not only racing the Jakobs; he's racing the all-time greatest distance runner title. And I think it's like you have to really sit down and think about all of his accomplishments. Mm. He's only twenty-six years old, and he has four global gold medals and mm. two silvers. And then he has the world record at the 5,000 and 10,000 yeah. uh, world cross country title. He's proven himself on the roads already. That's like, the real battle, I yeah. think, of this world championships that hasn't been played up as much. At this point, he has a better track resume than Kipchoge. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I think so. Uh, if, if not just as good, but it's not even over yet. I think like, what gets uh, the reason he gets overshadowed, and uh, I got to spend time with him in New York and, and talk about this a little bit. It's just because, like, he's not constantly winning. Like, there's, oh, yeah, there, there's never that era of dominance that you think of, like, but the Bekele and El Garouge, like, it, it, that's a consequence of just having to be at the deepest era of track and field where yeah, it's like there's so many guys who in the regular season have beaten him. Yeah, there's been moments in, in, in Chet yeah. guy's career. He turns it on for championships. There's been moments in his career where I feel I thought he was, like, on the way out. Mm. You know, like, because like he, he comes out, you know... Or to the roads, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah but like, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, on the track, I mean, like, you yeah. know, like, you know, he, he ran, uh, uh, you could see he was good at the, you know, post-COVID or during COVID when he did those... The world records, The world yeah. record attempts and, you know, good paced races. But I really wasn't convinced he was a championship runner. And I was, I, I thought last year when he won in Eugene, I was like, whoa, I wasn't, I actually had, I wasn't calling you for that one. Um, and then he did it tonight again, like, so... So yeah, he's definitely in the mix for that five k with plenty more. That's that's I think probably going to be the most um, interesting endurance event on the men's side. It's kind of refreshing because he would and he did have some criticism. It's like yeah, oh, you, you know, it's just he's a time trial with lights and shoes. Yeah. But now if you just have this many medals and you do show up and continue to win, yeah. then you know what is the argument against it? And again, only twenty six years yeah. old. That's uh, I mean, yeah. you you won David over Josh. Yeah, no, <laughs> serious. Yeah. All right, what event are you looking forward to the most tomorrow? 
I haven't looked at the schedule. No, Come on, no. the easiest answer. The women's 100. 100 oh, yeah, sorry, of course, the women's 100. Yeah, women's yeah. 100. Looking forward to... Um, I love the way the semis and the final are on the same day. Just because you get... Obviously, it's such a fast race, but you get more time to look at people and then you get to kind of, you know, play around with, like, the idea of, like, who's going to do well or not in the final. So, definitely the, the women's 100. That's going to be exciting. Well, so the thing about the uh, women's 100 tomorrow is... I'm looking at this now. It's not the it's, the, it's the final event of the day, but just sort of like over the course of the day, we're starting to get to the point, like first two days, it's like only one or two finals. Now it's starting like, oh, we got four. Mm. Tomorrow we've got men's triple yeah. jump, men's discus throw, men's 110 hurdles, which we didn't touch on. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Grant Hall, I mean, Grant here's Holloway, the story yeah. here is Rasheed Broadwell crashes out. Grant Holloway's chances of winning this gold skyrocketed. I think he looked phenomenal. Three peat on the way um and then the women's 100 meters so tomorrow's gonna be good yeah another exciting day in the world of track and field and i hope there's more fireworks uh it's finally calmed down that means the show has run really long but we want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching with us be sure to subscribe to the city's mag youtube channel if you're listening to this in podcast form and didn't get to watch the uh fireworks well the replay is available on YouTube. And then <laughs> we uh, be sure to subscribe, leave a five star review. And, you know, we want to hear your predictions. So leave them in the comment section, tweet at us, follow us on Instagram. That's where we're posting every single big result, every single big moment. So thanks to ASICS for supporting all of those efforts through uh, backing us for our coverage of the world championships. And, man. <laughs> It's days like this where I just kind of, you know, wake up every morning. I'm like, it's going to be a really long day. But the reason I do it is just because I love track and field. So true. It's really, it's touching that you bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. I got crap from the salute <laughs> last night. So I, I'm going to keep doing it. You were in ROTC. I was. <laughs>